Um, now, to begin with, maybe it's handy if I tell a little bit about how we started our collaboration. Um, uh, I think it's, um, it was August, yeah. a year ago or so, and um, I have been in and out. I lived more than 25 years in the Netherlands, and I occasionally have an exhibition here in Ireland, but I felt I was kind of out of the Irish art scene, and um, yeah, I, I kind of wanted to get back into it, uh, but I wasn't, I kind of felt like, who um, in Ireland um, knows how it works, and um, I've been following Martina and Maria for a number of years, and um, initially, about 15 years ago, I met Maria in the Netherlands, uh, her sister happens to live in the same town as myself, and I had an art uh, cycle route ex uh, thing happening, and uh, she happened to pop in. So from that moment, uh, we've been following each other. And um, Martina and Maria have collaborated in the past, and I think probably through following Maria, I also started following Martina. And um, they were, for me, actually, people that I admired and aspired to. And um, I kind of felt like if I reach out to them, who knows? Um, uh, it was a bit of a gamble, really, but I kind of felt like um, maybe they would like to work together. Uh, and we've been, uh, now, we met them last August a year ago and immediately hit it off. And it was, um, yeah, it's been a, a lot of work behind the scenes, but also really, really fine to bundle our, our power, as we'd say, and, um, yeah, um, to work together. And, um, that means the same studio, then? Is that what you mean by that? No, no not necessarily. Actually, I, I still work uh, in the Netherlands and they're yeah. both, uh, based in Inniscorti. Um, we've had, the, in the past, this is our second uh, collaborative artist group. The first one, uh, just like this one, we've sent from one person to the next. We've come up with an idea and themes. Um, this one is now with the themes of my own poems as the base, and then we've literally kind of um, yeah. posted it on to each other and, and worked on it. Uh, we've had a lot of Zoom meetings and a lot of a lot of email traffic <laughs> back and forth. And um, our initial exhibition, the very first one, was in Wicklow Library last February, and we have. Um, we're kind of doing county by county. We have about six lined up in the next uh, half year. Um, going to Wexford, Ennis, um, Kinsale looks like a yes. And uh, where else are we Mount going? Leash. Leash to Mount Melik. So we're, we're getting around. <laughs> and um, yeah, it's, it's been a, a, a delight um, working together. And every time we, uh, we come with our carloads of paintings and then there is a couple of minutes or a little longer of how the hell are we and um, every time it's it's just even exciting for us to see <laughs> what happens. Um, now, um, let me see, do you want to add anything? No. Oh, no. no, I'd like to hear. <laughs> <laughs> now, before I introduce uh, our let Dermot and Happy's work, um, um, I would like to just say a few words about Dermot. Uh, Dermot is also um, a painter, um, has studied at uh, Limbic School of Art, and is also a curator by several different organizations, uh, including uh, you have the Firk and Dance um, uh, in, in Cork City. There you have Part of it is Crane Visual, and uh, Dermot there is uh, the curator for the exhibition that happened there, as well as he has his own gallery, a recent a new gallery in McCormick, just outside from Moy. And uh, yeah, you're a busy man. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I think I'll, I'll leave it there and give the word to Dermot. Thank you very much, Olivia. And uh, very strange to hear about yourself <laughs> in public, but. Um, I'm just delighted to be here, first of all, and I'm always curious to see these new spaces, uh, or, or different spaces that I haven't seen. It's nearly 10 years since I've been in Clonmel, but uh, I know lockdown has, has gone now, we don't talk about lockdown anymore, but I feel like I'm getting out there at the moment. I was in Tullamore last week, so the um, 
Visual Artists Ireland have a, a thing every year called the Get Together, and they bring all the artists together and they do this networking event. And it's fun, and they change it. They bring it to different towns at different points in time. So I was in Tullamore, uh, hit and run up there, and I met 13 artists in one day. Because they do this speed curating thing. So uh, instead of speed dating, it's speed curating, and you meet for 10 minutes each artist, which is a, a bit ridiculous, right? because you can't meet someone in 10 minutes. But it's fun, and it's fast, and it's furious. But I, what I wanted to say about that was that I think I said to every single artist that I met there that day, in some shape or form, I said to them, do it yourself. Because all of the artists are coming, and I, I always say I'm a curator with a small C because really I'm a practitioner who's trying to get things done, trying to do, facilitate exhibitions. So in different shapes and forms, these artists would be saying, how do I get this? How do I meet that person? And I'm like, try all you want to meet the person, but in the meantime, go ahead and do it yourself. You know? And uh, I just think that uh, Maria and Olivia and Martina are an example of that uh, on speed. It's just unbelievable to watch you in action, grouping together like this. And this is what I've said to the other artists who listen to me, is that band together with other people to try and get things done. Don't wait for the official bodies, the official spaces. So this is the second question that they'll always ask me is, well, if I don't go to those five galleries in Dublin, where do I go? Yeah. And I've said, have you seen the libraries? Have you seen the libraries? Some of, especially some of the newer libraries have spaces that are as good as any gallery in the country. And the thing about the libraries is they have footfall, right? So yeah. there's people yeah. passing through here, right? There's people coming in, and uh, people are sometimes afraid to go into galleries, you know? So I'd just like to commend you and the, the Carmel Library here for, for putting on this exhibition and for your future plans, you know? So uh, I wanted to share one anecdote anyway about painting and about ways of looking at painting that I, I remembered recently and I thought I'd bring it up, you know. There was a time maybe 20 years ago in a studio that I had in Cork where an artist friend of mine, Gavin, was coming to visit. And he, um, he came in and then later on a lady who runs a cafe who's an art buyer, she came along. And I was really struck by the different ways of looking that they had. So the artist came in and he would, you know, he and I were doing that artist talk where you're up close, you're looking at the paintings and you're like, I did this with the structure, is this texture going on? And it's a very insider talk and it's about the structure and the planes of the painting. And that's, we just take that for granted and that's the way we speak about art. And then Patricia came in and she stood back from the paintings and she was like, oh, I love them. I love the colour. I love that. And I was looking at her going, she's treating this completely differently. It's a finished thing. It's a finished product. It's on the wall. And it's giving her pleasure in this way, right? And afterwards, I thought, Patricia's right, we're wrong. You know, I really thought that we forget sometimes as artists that this is the, the end point of that painting. And we were all three of us discussing sometimes how are the paintings finished? So should they have done more? And we forget then that there's this point in time from the public's point of view, it's done. It's done. Even the beauty of the unfinished corner in the painting, it's done as far as they're concerned, and your expression has gone into it, you know? So I was left with that problem in my head for a few weeks of Gavin on the one hand and Patricia on the other hand. And then I think today, the way I would look at that problem is through the lens of flow. So there's a lot of writing and talk at the moment about the psychology of flow. You know, Everybody knows what flow is if you're in practicing a sport or you're writing a book and you get into the zone and you get into this space of flow. But everybody knows about flow and whether you're a figurative artist, as Marie is, with the, these figures in there working away, doing things, or a much more abstract based or semi-abstract of the landscape, I think we can all connect this notion of flow. You know, so uh, for myself and my own practice in the studio, uh, sometimes I'll go in and I'll say to myself, Yes, flow is okay, but now I want to change the way I'm using colour and I want, I'd love to use sienna and sap green and burnt umber, I want my colours to be darker. And then you come along and you've got a day like today in Ireland, right, and I go in and it's orange and pink and blue and, you know, colour and flow go together. And I think that's what unifies this exhibition and three quite diverse artists are, are easily comparable through that lens of flow. So you've got Olivia's work, which is really uh, flowing and abstract, and I just thinking about the times maybe 25 years ago when we practiced Aikido it's together, yeah. this flowing forms in the Aikido, you can see those still present in the paintings, you know? Yeah. And uh, uh, Maria's work, 
you've got these ladies and two of the paintings I see are working away on like a tapestry so that there's a kind of a dialogue between mediums going on in Maria's work. There's, there's a stitching and a tapestry and a kind of a cloth based work and the patterning that comes out really reminds me almost of stained glass work. So there's a, such a strong coloration going on there and a patterning that it starts to have this uh, uh, dialogue between all kinds of making. And then there's the lovely work of Martina, which is this, it sits for me in this semi-abstract space where it's about the land, but it's a reaction to the landscape as well. What I find to be connected to this idea of flow, and this is what good painting does for me, is that it allows the audience their moment of flow. It allows them to enter into a space and a feeling. And this is probably why art, artists always have somebody coming up to them saying, it must be great to be an artist, right? Because they go up and they feel the flow in the paintings and they feel the beauty and the, and the colour, but they don't see any of the struggle, right? They don't necessarily see the struggle. So I, I'd just like to really compliment you on this and, and wish you good luck with the rest of the tour, domination tour of Ireland. Like just do everywhere you can, but you know, change it up as well and make it new for yourselves as you go along. Um, there's, a, there's a quote that I wanted to finish with. Um, excuse me, here with my glasses on. But it's, it comes back to colour for me. And every now and again I look up this quote from Paul Klee. And uh, I know this is probably the correct pronunciation, I think it's Paul Clay, but I knew it was Paul Clay, so I'm going to stick with that. So he had gone with some artist friends to Tunisia, so we're talking about 1920, and he had gone to Tunisia, two or three of them together, and really the works that he did there are quite delicate watercolours, they're, you know, arches or desert scenes or palm trees, but he was so taken by the experience, and this is a famous letter that he had sent back to somebody else in, in, in Austria or Germany, and he said, colour possesses me. I don't have to pursue it. It will always pursue, possess me. I know it. That is the meaning of this happy hour. Colour and I are one. I am a painter. And I'd just like to finish on that and you know, encourage you to talk to painters while you're here. And look, there's all kinds of affordable price points here as well. The book is beautiful, a collective work of art. Make sure to pick up something before you leave. Okay? Thank you very much. Hello. Thank you. Thank you.